It's time now for a look at latest in local news. In the news, the Wayne County Commissioners met Monday for their regular scheduled meeting on hand where School Superintendent Dr. Sean Kelly and Attorney Bob Smith, who is the attorney overseeing the school board's bonds for the major projects at the ROTC and Ag facility. School board needs the county to approve a resolution for a tax levy for the Board of Education to move forward with their bonds. Before the vote, Attorney Bob Smith explained the bond process and stated the bonds have already been sold. The he's lost and you're lost. Taxes will raise about thirty million dollars over five years, uh, and in order to do the project or start the project, this bond uh, is less than fifteen million dollars. It's thirteen eight seventy five to be. So you got that much of a cushion to pay it back if, if for some ungodly reason they didn't have enough money to pay it back then it would go to the state of Georgia and the state of Georgia adopted years ago what's called an intercept program and basically they guarantee that they will take the money necessary to pay any shortfall for any governmental agency. Uh, the shortfall for the, for the uh, payment of the bonds. If for some reason that fell, and if some reason that, if that fell, we got big problems because the state of Georgia, if they don't have the money, ain't nobody going to have the money. But, if that failed, then the county would, as they do now, they pass a, they, they pass a, they have to levy a tax, just like they levy a tax for the operation of the school board. They would have to levy a tax to pay that shortfall. That wouldn't be a county tax. That would be an additional school tax. So you got three. The chances of that happening is slim and none. But you get uh, that that helps basically you got two guarantees that the bonds are gonna be paid, repaid uh, with the interest, and you get a a much lower interest rate. <coughs> and put that in dollars and cents, these bonds have been sold. They were sold on November the 14th. The reason why they were sold then, because we got a premium of 1.1, the school board got a premium of $1.1 million. In other words, the, the bondholders paid $14,900 for $13,875 worth of bonds. They paid that premium, a million dollars. Also, the two days before these bonds were sold, committed to be sold, uh, the interest rate dropped 19 basis points, 2%. So basically, uh, the school board, because of this, because of this, this, tax levy and this intercept program, uh, the school board saved or made literally three million dollars. And that's basically and you'll you'll face that same thing with your spots. That's what the underwriter is for. We the bonds have been sold. They sold they were sold to the underwriter. The underwriter uh, it is responsible for, for selling the bond, but they've already been sold, and it's just a matter of closing this thing out. And once again, those comments of Attorney Bob Smith at the County Commissioner's meeting. Commissioners approved the tax levy on a 4 1 vote. <clears throat> Commissioner Jamie Hickox voted no. After the meeting, she explained that if something did go wrong, the cost would fall on the county taxpayers. She says she's not in favor of that. We'll be back with more from the County Commissioner's meeting after this word from our sponsor other commercial messages, so please stay tuned.
We continue with more from the news from the county commissioners meeting. The commissioners approved the qualifying fees for elections in the year 2024. We we'll have elections for sheriffs, school board members, county commissioners, coroner, state court judge, solicitor. Sheriff Chuck Mosley made it clear Monday that he is running for election in 2024 for sheriff. Commissioners approved their 2024 LeMig list. They approved a D transferring property to Waymore Hospital. They approved a bid for an EMS generator. That bid $30,700 from CK Electrical. They approved the date change for their January meeting. The new date will be January the 8th. They approved a memorandum in agreement with the DOT in reference to the Oglethorpe Road at Little Goose Creek Bridge for a second bridge. They approved a bid for new football equipment for the rec department. The bid $20,000 from Sheffield is for 100 helmets and 100 shoulder pads. Commissioners approved three school resource officers from the Sheriff's Department. Also voted to name the Osteen Fire Station the Lewis Fire Station. Commissioner Mike Gordon says the Lewis family donated an acre of land for that station. He wanted the fire station to be named in their honor, and it will be named the Lewis Fire Station. Several board appointments. They named Bonnie Gordon to the Workforce <clears throat> Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act Board. They selected Perry Morgan and Tracy Brown on the Grievance Committee. They reappointed County Commissioner James Thomas to the George Altamont Regional Commission. They had a second appointment currently held by Dawson Trapnell. Up for an appointment, Trapnell says he doesn't want to serve anymore. County Commissioner Jamie Hickok stated at the meeting she would like to serve in that position. But Chairman Kevin McCreary says that they've already reached out to someone else but had not heard back and motioned that the issue be tabled. Hickok's voted no to table the appointment, but it was tabled. Tammy Robertson appointed to the Solid Waste Authority Board, and Police Officer Brandon Williams was appointed to the DFAX Board. And let's look at some of the items at the County Commissioner meeting from last night. City of Jessup commissioners meet tonight at 7 p.m. On their agenda under old business, discussion of board appointments. Under new business, a discussion of tiny doors of Jessup event. Request approval of bond resolution for EA expansion. Report on interest rate quotes on SPLOS funds for the ladder truck. Approval of the two, 2024 alcohol beverage license for Union Station Brewing Company. Also a discussion about the 2024 alcohol license renewals. On the agenda is 42 alcohol license renewals here in the city of Jessup. Also, an executive session discuss personnel, items with the city manager, items with commissioners, items with the mayor. All that set for tonight at 7 p.m. at City Hall. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes and news, Governor Brian Kemp has appointed Scribner Mayor Jason Weaver to serve as a member of the Juvenile Justice Advisory Board, the appointment made back on November 17th of this year. On Monday in Atlanta, the governor says with the mountain of reserve money, he wants to speed up the implementation of a law passed last year to reduce the income tax rate in Georgia. Kemp signed legislation last year, House Bill 1437, to gradually reduce the income tax rate from 5.75 to 4.9% and increase exemptions when Georgians file their tax returns. The measure is called one of the largest income tax cuts in Georgia history, eventually prompting to save taxpayers $1 billion more or more a year when fully implemented. The rate is set to drop to 5.49% on January 1st, but the governor, surrounded by lawmakers Monday, announced that he'll back legislation to knock it down to 5.39% next year. If approved, the change would save Georgians about $300 million annually in taxes. Kemp says, all of us here today in Atlanta believe this is your money, not the government's. This is what happens when you budget conservatively. This is what happens when you think long term. Reminder, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce Christmas Parade is set for Saturday, December 16th at 7 p.m., in downtown Jessup. So if you still want to make an entry, you have time, simply call the chamber office today, 912-427-2028. The theme, again, it all started in a stable. Once again, the new date, Saturday, December 16th at 7 p.m. City's Grievance Christmas Parade is set for this Saturday at 4 p.m. Again, December 9th, a small town Christmas. Everyone's invited. If you need more information, call Scriven City Hall at 912-579-2211 and Scriven getting ready for the Christmas in the park on December 15th at Grace Community Park at 501 Bill Royal Street in Scriven, Georgia. We'll have vendors, bounce houses, hot chocolate, s'mores, 42,000 pounds of snow, lighting of the tree. Kids 12 and under must be accompanied by an adult. This is a free admission event. Again, it takes place on Friday, December 15th from 6 to 9 p.m. in the city of Scriven, Georgia. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, same a great day.